Alrighty, hey everyone, it is Thursday evening, it's time for Weather for Weather Geeks. We didn't do a, a video last evening on Wednesday evening because we had the threat for severe weather. We did a live stream, and thanks to everyone who tuned in for that. Thankfully, severe weather really didn't materialize on Wednesday. We were not expecting a big severe weather day, but we had that possibility of a few gusty storms, and we had a couple gusty storms, but they did not reach severe criteria in our region. We'll talk about what's happened over the last couple of days momentarily. But first, of course, Severe Weather Awareness Week continues this week in the state of Ohio. Uh, Pennsylvania has theirs in a few weeks in the middle of April. And all week we've been talking about various topics dealing with severe weather, some safety tips, some reminders, things like that. Tonight's subject is going to be lightning. Lightning tends to be kind of an underrated hazard. Now, in the grand scheme of things, there's not a tremendous amount of, of lightning fatalities, but they do occur, and it is, you know, not everyone dies from a lightning strike or a near a near lightning strike. You can be injured and not and not pass away. So we want you to take lightning uh, seriously. You know, it's interesting looking at the list of most common activities in which you have a uh, a fatality with lightning. A lot of these have to do with being on the water or near the water. So fishing, at the beach, boating, things like that. There's several other activities here, including camping and golf. Um, but, you know, a few of these, uh, some of the bigger numbers have to do with being out on the uh, water. No surprise, maybe, that uh, the majority of lightning victims are male, because a lot of these activities uh, are a little more male-centric, if you will, rather than, than female-centric. Not to say that there aren't females who fish or camp or go to the beach or anything like that, of course. But uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, there tend to be more males participating in some of these activities than females. So yeah, 80% of lightning fatalities are males. All right, uh, chances are if you're watching this video, you kind of know this already, but one of the common myths that I like to debunk is heat lightning. Lightning just caused by it being warm outside, right? Well, that's not really how things work. There's no such thing as heat lightning, really. Um, what people consider it refer to as heat lightning. You see lightning at the top of a storm, but you don't hear any thunder. All that is is lightning from a distant storm, and it's too far away for you to hear the thunder. We can see lightning from really far away, in some cases up to 100 miles away in the right circumstances, but we can only hear thunder from a distance of about 10 miles or so. Um, and so it's fairly frequent in the summer in which you have a distant thunderstorm, especially if you have a clear view to the horizon. You can see some lightning, but it's way too far away, more than 10 miles away for you to hear thunder. That's all that really heat lightning, quote unquote, is. We've had plenty of severe weather over the last uh, few days, that is for sure. Now in the state of Ohio, we had one confirmed tornado out in southwest Ohio, uh, north and east of Cincinnati. Had a funnel cloud report uh, near Wheeling yesterday. We had several uh, confirmed tornadoes uh, in parts of the southern U.S. The Carolinas were hard hit. The Deep South, a few days ago, early this week, it was Texas's turn with uh, several uh, reports of tornadoes in central and eastern Texas. In the here and now, no severe weather out there tonight, but wouldn't be surprised if a spritz or a sprinkle or a shower impacted some places before this evening is through. Cooler air is on the move. So we got into the mid-50s today. It's the last time we're going to do that until the middle of next week. We're down to 50 at 741 as of this uh, recording, but look at the cooler air to the north and west. It's in the 30s and 40s to the north and west. Upper level low pressure system, pretty easy to pick out this evening on the radar and satellite. It's this guy right here. This is what's gonna pivot overhead tomorrow and what's going on this evening in oh, Chicago and South Bend and Grand Rapids, places like that. That's the ghost of Christmas future around here. We can expect just a dreary, chilly, damp Friday evening across the Mahoning and Shenango Valley. So I don't think we see any snowflakes just yet on Friday. Uh, we're going to make it into the mid-40s in the afternoon on Friday. But there'll be some chilly raindrops around, especially as we get into the afternoon. Then it's overnight Friday night and heading into Saturday morning that I am expecting the air to cool enough that we will probably see some snow flurries, maybe even a snow shower in some spots as Saturday gets underway. Not expecting any snow accumulation during the daylight hours on Saturday. Uh, I do think that as we get into the afternoon, there can be some raindrops mixed in with these snowflakes. But then Saturday night and into early Sunday morning, the air mass probably does become cold enough that snowflakes can start sticking. We'll even have a little lake effect, a little lake enhancement under, underneath uh, these bands. And 
So yeah, this you know, this map kind of looks like February, right? And we may be dealing with enough snow to coat the ground in some spots. Highest risk for that, I would say, is north of I-80. Lower chances to the south. But once you're up towards uh, Mesopotamia and Kinsman and Greenville and Sandy Lake and up into Crawford County, Ashtabula County, you've got pretty decent odds of seeing about an inch or so worth of snow this weekend. Again, specifically, this would be mostly Saturday night, Sunday morning. Uh, flurries probably fade away Sunday afternoon. Boy, is it going to be cold on Sunday. <laughs> I mean, when you factor in the wind, the wind chill, let me back this up a little bit. Wind chills Sunday morning, yeah, probably no better than the single digits and lower teens. That is no fun for the last Sunday in March. Temperature-wise, this weekend, we're going to struggle. 39 Saturday, only 32 Sunday, and again, wind chills much lower than that. And despite a little bit of sunshine working in early next week, I think we're just about this cold as next week gets underway. So our forecast high on Monday, also no better than about freezing. We'll start to turn the corner a little bit Tuesday, then a bigger jump for midweek. Uh, the models are cluing on to a pretty decent uh, area of low pressure moving through the uh, lower Great Lakes, dragging in some milder air for midweek. This probably results in a period of, uh, a brief period of, of wintry mixing, uh, maybe a potpourri of precipitation, if you will, late Tuesday night, early Wednesday. But then we get into the 50s Wednesday afternoon, and then Wednesday night into Thursday. I think some rain showers will become pretty likely. Now that warm-up is not going to last all that long. It'll probably be followed by another cold shot for the following weekend as we flip the calendar into April. So uh, that, that warm-up is a pretty brief one next week. Overall, this is a pretty chilly, compared to the average, uh, looking pattern uh, taking us through the next couple of weeks. We're going to have a revised April forecast uh, next week on Weather for Weather Geeks and on social media. Um, and I suspect that the April forecast is going to look a little bit different than what March has turned out like. Uh, March is going to go into the record books as a warmer than average month. April, maybe not so much. So we can look forward to that outlook coming up next week on Weather for Weather Geeks. In the meantime, thank you for watching tonight and have a great rest of your Thursday night.